before you marry or you get married or anywhere sexual activities will be involved there are several things you need to know about your partner health wise before you even move on i'm in a very peaceful environment i don't want to give any threat to anyone today just subscribe just peacefully you know peacefully just subscribe Thank you very much. Now, the first one is a blood group. Actually, that's very obvious and you know the reason for that. It's because of the resource factor. We have blood group A, we have B, we have AB and we have O. Each is either positive or negative. The positive and the negative aspect denotes the resource factor. So if you have resource factor, there's nothing to worry about, especially if you are a lady. If you are resource negative and you are a lady, you need to actually always make sure that whoever you're getting involved with uh, sexually, you know their blood group because if your resource negative, it means that your body doesn't know resource. And if you so happen to get married, or maybe you just meet someone with resource positive and you conceive from them, it means that now your body will recognize there's something as something new, the resource factor that will be in the fetus as something new, and you're going to launch an attack to the baby. Now, the first pregnancy might survive. That is because, you know, the body usually takes a little bit longer before you get antibodies that can be able to close the placenta. The ones that are usually produced there on the spot are called IgMs. They're usually large, so they cannot close the placenta. So the first pregnancy might survive. The baby may be jaundiced because over time, the body will form IgG. It usually take time. So by the time maybe you're forming enough to attack the baby, you have already given birth. So it takes a little bit longer. The issue will come by when uh, you want to get the second baby, the other baby. And uh, this is because you already have IgGs that can close the placenta, meaning that the, the, the attack will be as early as when the blood islands will be formed. So that's very, very early in the pregnancy. So that's why it becomes a little bit very hard for you to even conceive. So that's why it's very, very important for you to always make sure that you know the blood group and especially the resource factor. And if you are a lady and your resource negative, always make sure anyone that you are going to be involved with, you know the um, blood group. And this is because when you go to the hospital, there's an injection that will be given that time to prevent your body from knowing that there's a new antigen and hence you can forever keep giving birth and continue there normally like another person. So this one should not be a determinant that you should not marry someone who is positive if you are negative. That is in terms of resource, but it's something Thing to know so that in case you get to a point where you want to get a baby you definitely have the information the fingertips of how you can go about it the second one is our genetic testing goes hand in hand with genetic counseling this is because of our genetic conditions like a sickle cell you can be normal you can be abnormal or you are a trait you are in between now for a normal person 100% you're okay sickle cell troublesome uh, if you are a trait, it means that um, now you possess two genes, one from the mother, the other one from the father. Now one of the genes is uh, expressing for sickle cell, but because you have normal genes, it means that you're going to produce red blood cells which are normal, so you don't feel it as much. But then we have triggers that can trigger you to have um, those which are abnormal being uh, sickle shaped. And this can happen, for example, you're living in a place which is high in uh, oxygen concentration like um, uh, Mombasa or maybe uh, Kisumu but then you move to a mountain region where oxygen is actually low so it can trigger your cells into uh, becoming sickle shaped and uh, that's a crisis because it can those cells are usually sticky and they cannot be able to yeah they're not flexible so they cannot move through the capillaries in the body so you end up blocking some of those uh, capillaries and you end up having pain crisis and sometimes even you can damage your organs it's actually very important to know if someone is a trait or not there is a test you can go to the lab and uh, your blood is taken out and then put in a place uh, like a slide a microscope slide and then everything is sealed after you mix the blood with metabiosulfide and then uh, we see if you're going to get sickle cell after it depletes the oxygen that is inside that blood so it's a very simple test it can get that in any laboratory. We also have the leukemia. This one also affects the quality of the red blood cells because it affects the formation of HB, so you have defective ones. There is another one called cystic fibrosis. This one leads to blockage of the tiny vessels inside the body. They are genetical. Getting to know them, it's actually very important. Some of these tests are usually not that common, but we can inquire. Let's call Lancet and see if uh, they usually offer genetical tests. And uh, yeah, let's see. This is Lancet. I'm calling to confirm if they usually do such tests. Not picking. Let's see if uh, Pathcare 
offer such path care Kenya. Let's see path care, path care, path care, path care. Thank you for calling Path Care Kenya. Your partner's in diagnosis. Your call is important to us. This call may be recorded for quality and training services. Please wait. This is Path Care Lab. Good evening. How can we assist? Hi, this is Moses. I'm calling. I'm making a video actually. So I'm Moses from HealthWise. We were requesting to see if uh, do you usually do genetic uh, testing, like for example, sickle cell, and also we have thalassemia. There is also another one, uh, cystic fibrosis. Do you offer such? Yes, we do. Ah, and how much for um, sickle cell? Just a minute. Hello? Hello? For sickle cell, we charge 800. Okay, 800. So is that one the normal way you use metabiosulfide or is it uh, electrophoresis? Can you allow me to put you through to the lab for this? Ah, okay. The better. Hey, Sasa. My name is Moses. Mm -hmm. I usually make videos online, um, health-wise. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. We have uh, genetic testing. So we have several tests that we want to inquire if you usually offer them more than in sickle cell. Mm -hmm. So which one do you usually do? Is it the one for metabiosulfide or is it the other one for electrophoresis or which one? Both. Both. Okay. So. Ah, which one do you... Green test, the green test, mm -hmm. that can be done. That one is the one that is metabolic Uh huh. If you want HBR to raise it, that one too you can get. Ah, nice. And, uh, okay, I have another one, the lacemia. Mm. The lacemia? Uh, yes, Peter. Uh -huh. do, you, do you offer such? The test to confirm that? Yeah, to, to confirm that someone has it or not. That's a uh, HB parameter too, so it's in HB electrophoresis. Ah, okay, nice. And uh, there's another one, cystic fibrosis. Huh? Cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis? Yes. Mm, that one I'm not sure unless I confirm. Uh-huh. Can I take your number? Yeah, it's okay, you can just take it. Do you have it there or should I tell you? No, I can see it from here. Okay. Let me call you back. Okay. Now for path care, they do HB electrophoresis, which is going to give us more than we actually need. So that's a really nice test. And uh, this is where we are going to get uh, the HB, which is responsible for beta thalassemia. Thalassemia, this is when you have disorders when it comes to the actual chains of HB. It's a, it's a little bit complicated, so I'm not going to complicate it a little bit <laughs> more for you. So let's go to the third one. Number three, sexually transmitted infections. And the reason I'm saying this is because we have some which are this is stubborn. Look at uh, syphilis. We have faces. We have when it's actually active. We have faces when it can actually hide in the body, and you still have it. So testing for that is actually very important for you to know whether that person is either exposed. It's actually very important. There is another test when we are still talking about STIs. We have HIV. It's actually a little bit tricky for you to know exactly if the partner is HIV positive because we know we have faces when uh, we, when you test using antibody-based kits, you can get that person being negative. So I usually encourage if you get to have tested today, if you are tested today, give yourself another two months. Just make sure everything is under protection, and then after those three months, then get tested again. Chances will be very, very high that if that person is in the Windows period, that time they are going to show it up. Or you can just go and do HIV ELISA. Also chlamydia. That one is also something they can even hide. Yeah, you have the infection, but you don't have any signs or symptoms, but you keep giving it to other people and uh, it can end up giving people infertility later in life. And the reason for this is because sometimes when, um, and especially ladies, when you have inflammation uh, that goes all the way up, that's when you get PID, pelvic inflammatory disease, you can end up having scarring when it comes to your uterus tissue. You know, the fallopian tube, you, we have cilia that are there. If you get to have an infection that goes all the way up to that point, one, you can get a scar. Scar will affect the cilia, so the movement will be affected. And also, you can have uh, the blockage of the tube. So, yeah, it's something that you really need to know about the partner before you get married. Number four, general wellness. 
I'm sure you've seen somewhere uh, in flyers and uh, billboards, so many places where there is a package for wellness. Like they can target your liver, they can target uh, the lipid. Yeah, in the body, the lipids we have several. They can target a certain uh, organ of the body, like uh, the heart. So we have things that can be tested. Like I'll give you an example with the UECs that are uh, urea, electrolytes, and uh, creatinine. They give us a picture of how well your kidney is functioning. We have um, LFTs, liver functional tests. We have things which are usually associated with the liver. We check whether they are normal. And this can give an indication of whether you are well enough. Because sometimes you can have issues with the liver. You can have issue with a certain organ of the body. So it's quite important for you to know that about your partner. Because, you know, at the end of the day, if uh, the kidney is somehow not functioning well, you'll take care of that, that person. So it's usually very important for you to know that early enough. Number five is fertility. This one is actually dependent on whether you're planning to have kids or not. Now, this one I'm going to divide it into two. For men, actually a little bit simpler. So we start with men, then we go to the ladies. For men, one hormone, actually very important. Testosterone usually define your masculine features. If you have less of it, you might end up having more of estrogen. So. Yeah, at times you can have even estrogen being tested so that you get to see the ratio between testosterone and uh, estrogen. But uh, testosterone is actually very important for you to have that tested uh, to gauge the overall masculinity. But then we also have another test which is uh, checking the quality of the sperms, that's semen analysis. So we have sperms, we have phosphates, we have uh, glucose, we have so many things inside to make semen and uh, they check the overall health of uh, the sperm. Ladies, you have four hormones, yeah? primary ones. We're going to ignore the rest, but you're going to focus on luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, we have progesterone, and then we have estrogen. Estrogen, very important. It's uh, the opposite of testosterone in men. So you'll have to have that tested. And the normal values are evaluated to see if uh, you are normal. We also have other hormones that might affect the four hormones that we've mentioned, but uh, we're going to focus on uh, the four here because uh, the other hormones were taken care of when you went for a wellness package where, for example, you went for a liver test, or maybe a kidney test, or maybe the thyroid test, which is actually very important because when you have underproduction, the same is going to affect even the other hormones that you have in the body. Number six, actually very important, this is mental health assessment for the same because you have people with conditions and uh, it's actually very important for you to know them at the conditions that is so that in case they need or they require uh, your help, you might be able to offer such. Like we have people with OCD, we have uh, ADHD, we have people with schizophrenia. So many mental conditions, and I'm not saying that if they have that condition, you should not marry them. It, it puts you in a better position for you to help them and even understand them. You might find that they decided to put the baby in the fridge and uh, they decided to put the milk in the bedroom. So, yeah. It's actually very important for you to know that so that you get to know how to help them in case of crisis or maybe when they have episodes or to avoid the triggers. I don't want to get to a position where, for example, you find that someone decided to burn the whole house because the remote was not placed in a particular place facing a certain direction. Also, you yourself, get to know yourself, get to know whether you have any condition and let your partner know if you have any condition. Another test, number seven, is urinalysis. This is quite simple. This one can give several indications. Like, for example, for UTIs, yeah, you get past health inside that, it can tell that this person is having an infection or it can be an indication of uh, the overall health of either the kidney or the body. If you find sugar inside your urine, it means that you are having an issue when it comes to the sugar. If you find protein, it means that uh, you have an inflammation when it comes to glomerulus or you have smaller proteins, that is an indication of something a bit bigger that needs further investigation. Or you can be having crystals inside your urine and this can be a clear indication that you might be having kidney stones which is something that you might want to take care of before it proceeds to the chronic levels. Number eight, the final one, um, lifestyle diseases. There is something like uh, diabetes. This one, you need to screen your partner and we have several tests for the same. One, it can be just random blood sugar which cannot be an indication on someone being uh, diabetic but it can be a very good place to start. We have another test which is fasting blood sugar which can also indicate whether that person is doing well with the sugar. We also have another test, OGTT. This is, you can choose either of them, but this will depend with, the, um, with your doctor. And uh, the mother of them all, we have HbA1c, which gives um, an overall interaction between your red blood cells and uh, glucose. So that one will give you an, an average of what has been happening in your body. Now, finally, the bonus should be in the category of STIs. This is hepatitis. I wanted to be specific about this one because it can be even more dangerous than HIV. 
The good thing is it's actually preventable. This one you can go and get a vaccine for the same and you'll never get it. So very important for you, if you don't have that vaccine, I'm sure if you're a healthcare worker, before you get a license, that's the first thing you get. Before you even get employed, you get to have that vaccine. So it's usually very important because yeah, hepatitis, you can get that through contact. Someone just came here, maybe there was a blood spill um, from someone who had that infection, it's happened to just touch it, chances will be very high that that person is going to get that disease. Hello? Hello? Yes. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, I'm calling you from healthcare. Yeah. You had called to inquire about some tests. Yes, cystic fibrosis. Yes. Oh, do so, you? Do? Mm. Uh, we we have uh, a test mm -hmm. which is a uh, more of a genetic mutation test. Mm -hmm. And um, it's actually a referral. We don't do it here. Okay. We we send it out. Ah. So it takes about uh, 10 to 12 working days to get the results. 10 to 12 working days. Okay, and uh, how much is the test? Okay, now I've uh, been told they have to do a markup, mm -hmm. but the price should range between uh, 50 and 60,000. 50 and 60, okay, it's okay. Now, yeah. are you okay if, for example, it's a video I'm making, in case maybe someone wants to inquire, uh -huh. can I put maybe yes. your number somewhere on the screen, maybe? Uh-huh. Okay. Yes. In case the they want to, uh -huh. Okay, in case they want to inquire, so they can just call you directly, and maybe if they want to get the test, you'll arrange with them. Yes, we can do that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I don't want to make a threat today, but uh, there is something intrusive telling me that if you don't subscribe, you better have seat belts on your toilet seat. To Poland. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 